Now we're ready for step four. And this step is critical. This step is really, really important. MLA in-text citations are required. Gotta have them. Now you'll notice this says in-text citations. Most of the people, when they do a research essay, they think about this, which is the works cited page. This is only part of it. These in-text citations go along with the works cited page. Failure to use in-text citations will result result in plagiarism and a zero F. What is plagiarism? Plagiarism is whether purposeful or accidental, not giving credit for borrowed information. And you'll use these citations in a combination of signal phrases and parenthetical references. And we'll take a look at how this happens. So this is a little primer that I've put together that will help you accomplish this. Remember, you've got this outline. You wanna pull this document up, jump into a paragraph, and then start to pull information from your research into your paper. One way that we're gonna do this is the author will be named in a signal phrase. What a signal phrase does, it introduces the material being cited to the reader. The most common way to do this is include the author's name. Right? Why do we do this? It prepares you, prepares the reader for the source and allows you to keep the citation brief. Here we go. Christine Hoffney, who is that? That is the author reports that, so then what you do is you create the signal phrase. So you're leading the reader to the research. After Japan made it illegal to use a handheld phone while driving, accidents caused by using the phones dropped 75%. So what do we see here? We see the quotation marks. What is this? This is a direct quote. Is it okay to copy word for word from your research into your paper? And the answer is yes. But what do you have to do? You have to cite it. You have to use quotation marks. Then what do we see at the end? This is the page number. In other words, on page eight of that article, we would find this direct quote. So author, signal phrase, direct quote, and then the page number. And there we go, that's how we do it. So again, that's the author named in a signal phrase. The next one, number two, is the author being named in parentheses. So the first one, we have the author at the beginning. Now we're gonna find the author at the end. If the signal phrase does not include the author's name or if there is no signal phrase, the author's last name, notice what? Just the last name, not first and last, just last name must appear in parentheses along with the page number. Example, most states do not keep adequate records on the number of times cell phones are a factor in accidents. As of December 2020, only 10 states were trying to keep such records. Sunbeam 2. So that's the author. Remember just the last name and then the page number. Notice there's no quote. I mean, there's no comma. There's no abbreviation of page, it's just a space. And now this is different than the first one. What did we have here? 
a direct quote. There's no quotation marks in this one. So what is this? This is a paraphrase. A paraphrase is when we don't copy word for word, but we read it and then we restate in our own words. And guess what we have to do? Give credit. We have to cite that. We have to cite it. So you're going to use paraphrases as well as direct quotes. Sometimes, believe it or not, you'll have an article that the author's not listed. Ooh, I know. Why? I don't know. It happens. So then what we want to do then is you always want to use the complete title in a signal phrase or a short form of the title in parentheses. So here's an example. As of 2011, at least 300 towns and municipalities had considered legislation regulating the use of cell phones while driving. There's no quotation marks. So what is that again? That's a paraphrase. We have to give credit for paraphrases. What is this? This is not the author. What's that? That is short form of the title of the article and then the page number. So far so good. Okay, the next one, number four. This is incredibly common, especially with articles that you get from a database or something that you get from the internet. When you print out articles from the database, what your printer automatically does, it automatically goes through and numbers them, right? But does that mean that that article was published on pages one, two, and three of Newsweek? No. So now it's a little bit different. What happens here is we do what? We omit the page number because we don't know. Sometimes you'll find an article which does have the page number from that magazine or journal, journal or newspaper. And if you find one of those, boom, go with it. But otherwise we, we can't use these pages. So we look here, we don't see quotation marks. So this is a paraphrase, remember, you have to cite paraphrases. The California Highway Patrol opposes restrictions on the use of cell phone while driving, claiming that distracted drivers can already be prosecuted. Jacobs, who is Jacobs? The author. Why is there no page number? Because it either came from an EDU internet source or it's an article from a database. So that's how we do it. And then there's some variations on the basic rules, right? Two or more titles by the same author, two or three authors, four or more authors or indirect source, also called a quote inside of a quote. But chances are those four basic rules will get you through documenting your essay. So please remember, in-text citations, gotta have them, gotta have them. You have to document, have to cite both quotes. Remember, if you have a quote, you gotta have a signal phrase. And you also have to cite paraphrases. Have to do both. So now what we're about to do is about to see how this is gonna look inside the paper as well as how to write, how to come up with your works cited page. And we'll hit that in the next lecture.